more information has been leaked regarding epic universe the newest expansion that universal plans in orlando and guys it is going to be absolutely massive this huge 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 addition in orlando specifically in uh, the city of orlando in orange county right next to the orlando convention center the orange county convention center and right next to i drive is going to be the biggest Thing in the region that we're going to see for a very long time and it is going to be development and theme park done right and in cooperation with local government with state government with private business cooperating with other business entities to do it right and to make sure it has a net positive effect on everybody surrounding that area and on floridians and beyond that it's just going to be fun and on top of that they just leaked the information that they are going to put out a special district they're going to create a special district I mean, so people are all thinking reedy creek right no it's not going to be reedy creek it's going to be reedy creek done right it's going to be a different type of special district which will work perfectly and perfectly synchronize business interests, government interests, and merge them together into properly done development in Florida. So we're going to explain all this from an attorney who knows a little bit about this. Of course, I am Andrew Esquire, Florida attorney who used to specialize in special districts. In fact, I've formed many community development districts or CDDs as we call them in Florida. Uh, in fact, I might call myself the uh, a bit of an expert on that um, and Florida property law in general. Um, and I used to, my firm used to represent Universal on these real estate deals. So I, I had to be kind of cagey and careful in the past in terms of what I referenced because I have to wait until it's public record. I have to wait till everything that I know about or I think about is clearly part of the public record. But now it is very clear that these statements have been made in public. There's no damage to former representation. So I can go out there and just talk about things that I worked on in the past, which it always feels good to do that, to be able to actually talk about it when it's no longer confidential or potentially damaging. Mwah, beautiful. So Epic Universe is something I have been very, very familiar with. I actually helped in the purchase of that land or rather the repurchase of that land. Uh, and there is a there is actually a lawsuit regarding an entity that thought they had an option on that property that's going on right now, but shouldn't impact the timeline of opening Epic Universe in 2025. Now, of course, this right here is the concept drawing, and I'll drop down in the corner here for Epic Universe, and it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. It's going to have a lot of different uh, rides in there and we're going to see what they are now it, one thing i will say it will not have is it will not have a zelda ride that is because and shout out to my good friend wdw pro the zelda ride is actually going to go over at the lost continent and islands of adventure this was something that was rumored in 2020 shout out to alicia stella who dropped this one on orlando park stop in uh, 2020 uh, this was a rumor which is ultimately confirmed that is ultimately true and you can see the um, conceptual, and of course this is subject to change and may be altered over time, but the conceptual map here for Epic Universe. Uh, you've got a fantastic Beasts area, which will be a new Harry Potter expansion, which will have some quick service and full service restaurants. You're gonna have some theater shows, attractions, a dark ride. You're gonna have How to Train Your Dragon. You're gonna have a ride for that one, a Skyfly ride, a boat ride. Uh, a play area, you're gonna have Super Nintendo World. So this is going to be the most interactive version. So yes, I understand some of you may have seen the one in Hollywood, in California, uh, and you may even have been to Japan. Shout out to Osaka. The one in Osaka is actually fantastic. This is gonna be even more engaging, even more interactive than those versions. You're pretty much gonna be in AR, right? Which if you're familiar with Pokemon Go, augmented reality, you're gonna be in AR pretty much the entire time interacting with the environment. You're gonna be able to buy power-up bracelets. That's gonna be a massive money maker. Um, just, it's gonna pr absolutely print money. And it's a concept they've experimented a little bit with in Harry Potter world, not full AR, but with the wands, they had a little bit of interactivity there. But this is gonna be beyond it by far, uh, especially with the Mario Kart ride, which will be sold out forever, the Donkey Kong coaster and the Yoshi ride. Those things are gonna kill. Then you're gonna have a Universal Monsters uh, area, and as well as a centrally located hotel that will bring you right into the park 
which will be absolutely fantastic. So this plan looks like it's setting up for absolute success. And for those who don't know the location, this is something very important. It, the Orlando Orange County Convention Center is right here. This is actually, in terms of number of visitors, the Orange County Convention Center is actually number two. The number one is Vegas. And then after that, it's the Orange County Convention Center. So this is one of the largest in the world. It has a massive amount of space. So it is right here next to this development. This developing land here, actually, they own all of this land. Uh, and this buffer land as well, this conservation land as well. They own that um, right by the Rose and uh, Shingle Creek. So there's that's where they're going to develop it. And you can notice how centralized it is to I Drive, to that Icon Park where you've got the wheel, the Ripley's, you know, all that good stuff over here. All these restaurants on I Drive, you know, love it or hate it. Hey, it's right there. You've got the Andretti carting. If you haven't done that, that's actually really fun. But all these are going to be centrally located right next to it. It's not Disney World. It's not off in the middle of nowhere. And if you zoom out even further, right, it's right near the city of Orlando. So you can go easily into the city of Orlando. And even more easily, you can go to the Orlando airport. And one exciting thing about this project is they're going to make it even easier. They're coming up with a way to make it even easier for you to get from Orlando Airport to over here to the convention center and to the universal, um, universal attractions and also to Miami and to other areas in Florida. And we'll talk about that right now. Now, in this article here, it drops out the fact that they're planning to expand with a new road named Epic Boulevard, which is going to lead to Epic Universe. Uh, and they're also going to extend uh, Kirkman Road, which they've already been doing. They've already been extending uh, Kirkman Road. Uh, it's going to expand to six lanes of traffic. So that's going to be a massive, massive, massive road. But the more important thing here, and this is what a lot of people are not covering, but I certainly caught this, is they are going to use a community development district to put in a Sunrail station. And this is something that I proposed when I, back when I was working in Orlando a long while ago. Now, unfortunately, I wanted to push for getting Reedy Creek level powers. And as you know, and as you guys have been following this for a long time, uh, obviously that's not happening, right? They're not going to give another district Reedy Creek level powers. But my argument was, hey, that's not fair. Right. You know, you should be if they've, they've got it, you got to give it to us. And at that time, they said, hey, that's not long for this world. So hold on and just do it like everybody else does it. So I said, all right, fine, we can form a CDD and whatever innovative transportation methods we have, we can fund it through a community development district or special district. That was my proposal. It looks like they went with my proposal, and that is to create a new district to plan, finance, and own the new rail station. And this is going to be in cooperation uh, with the airport, with the convention center, and with Universal and the county. So this is something where everybody is working together. They're collaborating like Disney was supposed to do in their industrial showcase. They were supposed to be working with other people, working with other businesses. But Disney has pretty much said F you to everybody but Disney. And they've said my way or the highway. That's not how other people have been playing it. Certainly Universal. Universal has said, we are going to play nice. We're going to talk with the county. We're going to talk with the convention center. We're going to talk with the local businesses. We're going to get their buy-in. We're going to get the sharehold, the stakeholders on our side. And that's what they're doing here. So when you see about this proposed uh, station, you see they want to create a taxing district. And they're going to call that taxing district the Shingle Creek Community Development District. Now, community development districts are a type of special district in Florida under Chapter 190. Uh, I've formed quite a lot of them, and they can do a lot of things. They can fund infrastructure and they can fund trains. You do have to ask for special permission to do that, but it's typically granted. Um, and they're going to call it the Shingle Creek Transportation Utility Community Development District. Now, a lot of people say, hey, look, uh, you know, Reedy Creek is being dissolved. Look, they bring that up right here saying Reedy Creek is being dissolved. Aren't you concerned? Right? Aren't you worried? Well, no, because they're doing it right. They're having a district just like every other district in Florida. It's not unique amongst the almost 2,000 special districts in Florida. It's the exact same type of district. Very safe, very secure, not going to be subject to attack from the, any political side at all whatsoever. 
and that entity will oversee the funding construction operation. And they're gonna issue millions of dollars of bonds. So right here it says, you can see at the bottom, the taxing district promises to initially raise 125 million through bonds to defray the projected $1 billion price tag. So they're going to use bond funding to uh, pay for this and the bond funding will be paid back through um, revenue that's generated by the district. So, and that's gonna connect with light rail. So what you're gonna have here, and here's the map, is you're gonna have the inner, the sun rail, which is currently chronically underused in uh, Orlando. You're gonna have the sun rail connected to this station. So people are gonna go directly via train from the airport to the convention center, to Disney. This is going to be massive. And mind you, at this exact same time, Walt Disney World has canceled their plans for a Brightline train station because Walt Disney cannot play well with others. Walt Disney wants it their way or the highway. And frankly, it's just not how it works. It's just not how it happens. So Walt Disney here, uh, definitely going to get blown out on this one. Definitely going to have uh, some problems uh, with this one. And you can see, by the way, the rendering here, this is the rendering of the station, you know, obviously a little 3D right now, but this is going to allow people to connect with Brightline all the way to Miami. Brightline is the rail that goes down to West Palm Beach, uh, Fort Lauderdale and Miami. And guys, a lot of travelers, I lived in Orlando and actually I used to talk with a lot of people who traveled there and tourists and everything else. And they would want to go to Miami. That was their other big destination, particularly if you're coming from Europe or from Asia or Latin America. You're trying to go to Orlando and Miami when you visit Florida. You want to hit both. This is going to make it so easy for people, particularly people that are, let's say, from Europe and they're used to public transit. They're used to trains that are connected everywhere. They're going to be able to do what they're familiar with. And they're going to do this. This is something that is going to get numbers. It's going to get people that just want to come up. They don't want to drive. They don't want to mess around. They want to just hop on a train, head up to Orlando for the weekend, you know, stay in a hotel because there's many hotels in this iDrive area, stay in a nearby hotel or an on-site hotel and, and uh, have that train transport back. This is more advanced connectivity than anything we see in Reedy Creek. This is what Reedy Creek was supposed to do. Reedy Creek, if done correctly, was supposed to be connected. It was supposed to interface. It was supposed to work with others. But Disney has repeatedly said that they do not want to play well with the rest of Florida. In fact, the only thing they want to do is do it their way. But in fact, that's going to end up with a massive L for Disney and a massive W for Epic Universe. If you guys are excited about Epic Universe, let me know. Make sure you're smashing the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We're almost to 100K and ding that notification bell. And I will talk to you guys about this and much more later.